Hello, everybody, and welcome. <clears throat> welcome to our Vesper prayer today. And my name is Sister Eleanor, and I'm a member of the Teo community of Interfaith Franciscans. I'd like to welcome you again. <clears throat> I have our candle that's lit here for peace. It's always very bright. It's only a small candle, but it shines very brightly. So we'll put that to the side. And we'll pray for peace first. God of peace, who has taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of thy spirit lift us, we pray, to thy presence. Where we may be still and know that thou art God. Amen. So today we have the feast in the Roman Catholic Church and Christian churches of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Yesterday we had the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Today it's the Immaculate Heart of Mary and I'd like to speak a little bit to that. I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is a picture of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. as it is portrayed quite a bit. So I'd like to talk to you about it a little. <clears throat> Today is the memorial of the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Her pure heart holds the truth of her interior life, showing her devout love for God and her total devotion to her son. In addition, her heart echoes the pains of this world excuse me, as expressed by her sorrow, yet reminds us to be confident in her son's victory over sin and also death. Today's memorial points out the importance of spiritual contemplation. The mystery of Mary points to the mystery of Christ, and when pondered together, new aspects of Christ's nature are revealed. Meditating upon her heart can open our heart to an overflowing abundance of love for God. So today, let us ask Mary for that, for the overflowing abundance of God, and that we can have the balance of the divine feminine in our lives. If you are of the Christian faith, then you can pray to Mary. It might seem a little strange for those who are not used to doing that, but you can pray to Mary and she can help to open your heart up to God, just as her heart was opened up to God. I always liken it and when people feel strange to, to pray to a saint or pray to Mary or anybody like that, except for Jesus or except for God. I always mention the fact that we do not find it strange in any way, shape or form to ask our neighbor or our friend to intercede on our behalf in prayer. So it's the same thing, even though these people have passed on to the next world. So just remember that and just ask Mary to be a part of your life so that she can open you up more to God's plan for your life. Just say one little prayer to her today, or just think about her today, or just think about how her Immaculate Heart held so many things. It, it held sorrow, it held joy, it held happiness, it held love most of all. So now we'll go to our evening prayer. O oh God, come to our assistance. O oh Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him king of glory now. Tis the Father's pleasure we should call him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty word. Humbled for a season to receive a name from the lips of sinners unto whom he came. Faithfully he bore it, spotless to the last, brought it back victorious when from death he passed. Bore it up triumphant with its human light, 
through all ranks of creatures to the central height, to the throne of Godhead, to the Father's breast, filled it with the glory of that perfect rest. And that was written by Carolyn Noel in 1870. And now we have the psalm that we are going to pray now. Just make sure. Okay. The psalm that we are going to pray now is Psalm 119. And this is a meditation on God's law. The antiphon is, Your word, O Lord, is the lantern to light our way. Alleluia. Your word is a lamp for my steps and a light for my path. I have sworn and have made up my mind to obey your decrees. I am deeply afflicted. By your word, give me life. Accept, Lord, the homage of my lips, and teach me your decrees. Though I carry my very life in my hands, I remember your law. Though the wicked try to ensnare me, I do not stray from your precepts. Your will is my heritage forever, the joy of my heart. I set myself to carry out your statutes in fullness forever. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let your word, O Lord, be a lamp for our feet and a light for our path, so that we may understand what you wish to teach us and follow the path that your light marks out for each of us. And again, the antiphon is, your word, O Lord, is the lantern to light our way. <clears throat> now we pray Psalm 16. Psalm 16 talks about the Lord himself is our heritage. The very God who made the universe is our heritage. When I see your face, O Lord, I shall know the fullness of joy. Alleluia. That is the antiphon. Preserve me, God, and I take refuge in you. I say to you, Lord, you are my God. My happiness lies in you alone. You have put into my heart a marvelous love for the faithful ones who dwell in your land. Those who choose other gods increase their sorrow. Never will I offer their offerings of blood. Never will I take their name upon my lips. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and my cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. The lot marked out for me is my delight. Welcome indeed the heritage that falls to me. I will bless you, Lord, you give me counsel. And even at night direct my heart. I keep you, Lord, ever in my sight. Since you are at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart rejoices. My soul is glad. Even my body shall rest in safety. For you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved one know decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence. At your right hand, happiness forever. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, our teacher, and to the Holy Spirit of God as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Lord, uphold those who hope in you, and give us your counsel, so that we may know the joy of your resurrection, and deserve to be among the saints at your right hand. And the antiphon again is, When I see your face, O Lord, I shall know the fullness of joy. Alleluia. And now let us praise God through the canticle from Philippians, which speaks of Christ as God's holy servant. The antiphon is, let everything in heaven and earth bend the knee at the name of Jesus. Alleluia. Though he was in the form of God, Jesus did not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself and took the form of a slave being born in the likeness of men. He was known to be of human estate, 
and it was thus that he humbled himself, obediently accepting even death, death on a cross. Because of this, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every other name, so that at Jesus' name every knee must bend in the heavens, on the earth, and under the earth, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God, our Father and Mother, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to our Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus, who is our teacher, and to the Holy